Hey everyone, uh, tonight I have with me Josh Hewitt and you remember a couple of weeks ago we had Natalie Hewitt. Well they just happen to be related, like mother and son. So we're going to tell you the story of Jake and sadly, um, yeah we'll be telling you the story of from a brother's perspective. Um, so what are you just doing then? Oops. So we're going to tell oh. you the story of... Okay. Oh well, I've just heard myself anyway. Yeah. So. I'm learning. I'm learning little processes here. So, can you put it on mute? So, what are you doing? You're sharing this story on your Facebook page. Is that yes, what you, you can go. Um, if you start watching the story, you yeah. should get a little uh, bar down the bottom that says "Start your own watch party with this playlist," and then a button that says "Try it." And if you hit "Try it," um, people on your friends list are going to be able to tune in and see what you're seeing. Well, there you go. I have learned something tonight. Thanks for that. So, um, all right. So we've we've um, we've got it right. We now know how to do it. Yeah. Well, I now know how to do it. I think. I so. And I see that little bar come up that says "Watch Party." Mm -hmm. So now I understand what that's all about because I never really knew what that was about. And I've been known to just push buttons for the sake of pushing buttons to try and work things out. And I've actually deleted really important information on a lot of things. So I now know not to push buttons that I don't know what they are. But now I know what that is. I'm going to try that. Yeah. So that means all your friends now are watching this show. No, because if I tune in, we're going to hear the volume. <laughs> oh, okay. So that didn't work. No. So even though I've tagged you, let's give it a yeah, let's give it another bell while I'm on the phone. I mean, while I'm on the show. I might so. just turn the volume down. That should work. So there we go. Oh, I get it. Start watch party. So there it's going now, is that right? Yep. Okay, all right. So there we go, we're watching it. So thank you everyone for joining in tonight and um, yeah, hearing from a different perspective, like for you, Josh, you know, um, let's go back to, well, let's talk about the relationship, like with your brother. Like, did you have a great relationship with your brother? Um, up and down, we started, we, uh, when we were young children, we were best friends, um, very close. I, you know, I treasured him, I was glad to have him around. But then, um, you know, once the hormones began to kick in, you know, we became... On so, both parties, you mean? With both yeah, parties, both parties. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I got, obviously, I'm, uh, what am I, seven years older? Yeah, seven years older or so than him. And... Um, you know, I, hit, I came of age first, but it wasn't until, um, you know, the testosterone began to hit Jacob that um, we'd start to butt heads around the home and, and we had uh, fairly, you know, similar personalities in some ways, but um, I guess on the surface, at, particularly at the time, I was uh, uh, introverted and he was very much outgoing and loud, boisterous and that sort of, that clash with my idea of a you know, a quiet environment. So, um, did you find that to be, like, disturbing to you, that he was so outgoing? Did that kind of worry you, or did you think that, you know, he's just so loud and out there, and did that kind of, um, well, how, I guess, how did that make you feel? Oh, it just annoyed me. <laughs> <laughs> And see, you know, it's great that you could talk like this. Yeah. You know, and it is it, it is about being really open and, you know, because this was about hearing from your perspective as a brother, losing a brother. And I know, you know, like a mother losing a child, I know it, you can't really say one's more powerful than the other because you've, you've virtually lost someone that you love regardless, whether they're son, brother, and mother, father. Mm. Um, so... Did you guys share the same room? Um, no, we never did. Uh, he shared a, he early on. He shared a bunk bed with our youngest brother, Liam, our baby brother. But um, no, we we pretty much always in separate rooms. Yeah. But, so um, personality wise, like, did you play the same sports or? Um, no, we we would we were both sort of into a little bit of rugby league. Like we, you know, we we were both the family of Panthers fans, except for Mum, who goes for the. Knights, 
we're not going to hold that against her, <laughs> all right? Like, you know, yeah. don't, like, she is here tonight in the audience, so we'll just be careful what you say there, right? Yeah. Just let it go with the nights because she's local. Like, but, yeah, but I mean, we, we all had the, the whole family's got the same favourite films and, uh, you know, video games and things like that. Same interests. We're all, we're all fairly creative kids. Same with our parents. Yeah. So Josh, um, he studied electrical uh, electrician. He was an yeah, electrician. Yeah, Jake was an apprentice electrician uh, for the for a couple of years before he died. Yeah. Before that, he was uh, he was working at KFC for quite a few years. You know, sort of at the back end of school, into his early twenties, and then he got this apprenticeship. It was the last job we had. So what were you doing? Did you study? Me, I, I studied um, communication at the University of Newcastle. I had a major in media production. Um, I didn't know that. And here I am sitting here going, you know, you don't have to worry about it. It's not Channel 7. It's like, wow, whoops. <laughs> you didn't say anything. We've <laughs> got a couple of major faux pas here tonight, That's but, you know, <laughs> you didn't offer your assistance. Well, it's your show. <laughs> <laughs> oh no so yeah it's sure it's okay to giggle at situations like that I guess you know because it makes the heart sing but that's what I was doing at the time at the time now I work for him so for the uni okay and doing the same thing like in uh, communications yeah more or less it's kind of like an, an internal marketing role we tell the students what's happening and we use uh, social media graphic design the website, even write down the posters and things like that to get the message to students on uh, on their terms. Right, well now that I know all this information, I'm going to be picking your brains at the end of this, right. but just don't judge me on this, okay, because this is no. about being real, I mean that's I what that's what this show's about, it's yep. not professional, it's not about that, it's just about being raw and real and for people to feel comfortable <laughs> telling their story, you know, because it's important, I think, to get the point across that everyone has a story to tell. Do you not agree? Absolutely agree. Like there's something in someone's life that has happened in their life. Whether they share it or not is another thing. But to me, if you're willing to share it, it's a wonderful thing that you can share it on social media hmm. to help others. So there would be someone out there tonight watching the show that they've lost a brother as well. You know, yeah. and maybe something that you say tonight may help them get through whatever hardship they're going through at the moment. Maybe it's just fresh in their, in their family right now. And, you know, watching the show with you is going to give them great comfort. So that's the way that I see the show um, as far as helping people. But let's go back to um, a couple of days before, a week before. Did you... Did you pick anything up with your brother? Um, well, the day it happened is... Uh, it happened two days before my 29th birthday and three days before Mum's birthday. So it's going to be a strange time of year for the rest of our lives. But um, uh, to the best of my memory, the last time I saw him was in person at the family home and... Um, I had arranged some birthday drinks down here in Newcastle for my birthday on the very day and when I saw him in person I invited him and he seemed oddly cagey about his answer, I thought, oddly um, non-committed. So He was always up for a party, always. So you picked something up there? Yep, absolutely. So did it make you think about that situation, like, did you did it cross your mind again? Um, before the before it happened, mm. uh, not only just that it, it sort of hung on my mind a bit. That um, it just struck me as odd, but I thought, oh well, he's um, he just might be not in the mood, and I I wrote it off at the time. Okay. I mean, I would have never have guessed it was going to be that serious, but mm. yeah. So you you picked up something though. Yeah, something was off. Yeah. Was that the only time that you've picked up anything like that with him? No, oh, bits and pieces over the years. Usually, like maybe he, maybe he'd come home uh, pissed, and 
like after being out and just a bit upset. That sort of thing. You Could know. you talk to him about anything, or were you that kind of like did you have that kind of relationship? When when we got older, yes, very much so. Yeah. Once, yeah, I felt like once I, uh, particularly once I moved out, um, our relationship just improved exponentially. So did you spend a lot of time with you in your your home? Um, now and then he'd come down and visit, but um. So you're living in Newcastle then? At the time, yeah. But um, he has his, he had his friends in Singleton, and uh, they're incredibly tight. And uh, he, you know, he he he'd rarely give up a weekend with these people, with these guys to, you know, come down and hang out with his dope brother. of an older brother. <laughs> <laughs> he was very popular though, wasn't he? He was. Yes. Because I remember your mum saying about um, all the guys wearing their their uh, jerseys, their footy jerseys. Yep. And. Um, we posted a photograph of them. When your mum was talking to me, I don't know why, but for some reason I thought there'd be just a small group of young men. And when I think about it now, she did give me a number when we were in conversation. But then when I saw the photograph, it was like a massive crowd. That would be about 30-odd 30 30 odd, uh, Penrith Panthers jerseys, um, either with his name on the back or the boys' nicknames. Individual yeah, because he did give them... And the girls. Like, they had, they had a, large, a large group of friends, yeah. So, um, what were you doing on the day? Where were you when all this was, when it started to transpire? Well, at, at the time, while studying, I was uh, working at a pub, and I'd worked the night before, so I was asleep, and I can't, I can't remember what time of morning it was, but um, I was awake, uh, I had a day shift at the pub, I had no classes that day, um, and I got a phone call from mum. And um, initially I thought, we had a very old cat at the time. He was over 20 at the time, like in people years. Mm. He was a 22 year old cat. And uh, when I answered the phone to mum and I uh, heard the tone of the voice, I thought, oh shit, Milo's gone. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> and, um, you know, and she said, oh, are you... Are you sitting down or are you, are you in bed or something? I went, yeah. And she said, Jake's dead. I went, what? And then I was a bit blurry. I think I fell out of bed, sort of scrambled across the floor. Um, my former partner was beside me and um, she just kicked into action, did her thing. And um, got us all packed up and in the car to go back to Singleton. So you were there, like, to support your mum and the family? Yeah, so. just, yeah. Just had to be there. That was the end of it. That was just, at all costs, get in the car, get to Singleton as soon as possible. Yeah. So what were your thoughts when you were in the car? Because, I mean, it's a long drive. It's like an hour and a half, isn't it, to Singleton? Yeah, and this is before the bypass opened, too. So we're going through Lochinvar and Maitland to get to Singleton. So it was a little bit longer. Um, like I said, you know, the memory's patchy because of the trauma, I think, but, um, I was, pro I think I was focused on that last hug that I had with him where he told me that, yeah, I might come to your party, maybe. Just remembering how his, how his shoulders felt, how his back felt, yeah. I don't think I had a song stuck in my head, which I struggle, I'd, Struggle to listen to now, but um, yeah. What song is it? Uh, it's called Survival Expert by Something for Kate. And um, I think it was written about a person with uh, terminal cancer. So there's, a, there's, definitely, um, there's definitely themes of loss in the song. And it was just stuck in my head at the time. So when I hear that song, I just I remember you know, my forehead against the uh, cold car window in the rain and that's something I've worked pretty hard to shape these last six years. But, so it's been six years? Yep. As of two weeks ago. Yeah. 26th of June. 27th, sorry. So then, like, you've arrived <clears throat> home and um, for those people that haven't seen your mum's interview, um, Jake took his own life. Yep. 
and your mum was reversing out of the driveway and found your brother. Mm -hmm. um, so you've gone home. Uh, and like, what was the first thing that ran? Well, obviously, you see your mum, you go to your mum and you want to cuddle her. But what was the first thing? Was, was it like this? Because I know what it's like when I've lost my beautiful bestie, who's like my sister. And it's like this feeling that you don't think that it's real. Did you have that feeling? Yep. Um, you think any minute they're going to walk out the door, that it's all a, not, not that it's all a joke, but you're dreaming. Like, and it's so real, you're going to wake up. Yeah, I, I wanted the emergency services to get away from me. That was the first... It's quite a long driveway, so you go up to the driveway past the group of trees where the scene was, and um, there's an ambulance and a police car there, and you know, I remember asking my g girlfriend at the time, saying, why are they there? What are they doing there? Why are they around him? And then she pulls up, and I open the door, and fell out. And... Dad came out, came rushing over and picked me up and dusted me off and then it was just, you know, hugs and screaming and, yeah. So that was still there when you got there? Yep. Yeah, they weren't, they, they were almost done. Yeah. So were you allowed to go over to your brother and hug him? And... Uh, no, uh, not, not hug him. Um, he was just under a white sheet in the rain and we just... Um, I, I can't remember what the experiences of the rest of the family were. I'm, maybe mum and dad hugged him, I can't remember. I just I remember reaching under the sheet and just touching the top of his hair and telling him I was sorry. And then just, um, just it, was, it was just like a ritual. Dad was seated on a stool at his head um, with his elbows on his knees and we were around, mum had a little cane umbrella, it was raining, um, you know, of course he had to do it on a bloody rainy day, that's part of how I cope. I know, you've, you've got to find a little bit of humour there to keep it going. Yeah. Because you could totally lose it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and um, that in, in the absence of any religion or spirituality in my life, that's, that's how I cope is I can have a little, you know, a little smirk about things. Like coming, like going into the garage, like years later, th three years later, and finding a pair of thongs that I lost and figuring out that he stole them from me. <laughs> <laughs> little bugger. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, um, I mean, you don't have to answer this, but you said you bent down and you said that you were sorry. Why were you sorry? What was the... The thing that you were sorry that. Uh, first, well, first instinct was just to blame myself. I I immediately started thinking back to when we were teenagers, um, and thinking, was there a time when he was twelve, when he was thirteen, and I was pushing eighteen or something, that I told him he was a piece of shit, and or just said something cruel that brothers will say. Hmm. Um, and was there almost was there a butterfly effect between something like that and then when he's 24 25 years old and decides nah this is it did i did i kick something off or did i accelerate something so there was definitely that and then it was just sorry that i think um sorry that he felt as though he couldn't continue and for you, like, what was it that helped you through it? What do you think was the, the best thing that you could have done for yourself to get through what you had to get through? Something that worked for you? On the day? Or on ongoing? the day and ongoing. Uh, on the day, Liam, our little brother. Absolutely. Um, of, course, of course we're all there for, for mum and for dad, but... Um, they were they were really taking care of each other, and so I was I felt as though I was taking care of Liam, and likewise, to be honest, yeah. How old was Liam at the time? I can't remember, Mum. <laughs> Mum. Uh, twenty two. Twenty two. He's yeah. very young. 
So, um, what was the other thing? Oh, that I asked, what was the thing that helps you get through it today? Mm, that's, that's hard because it, uh, it comes around to something. Uh, well, the, the, the thing is, that, you know, I don't mean to get too far off track here, but. Um, no, you, it's a question. You should say you're answering it. <clears throat> Basically, if I, if, I, if I hadn't been through this and seen what happens to a family in the aftermath, if I hadn't sat in that rain, mud on my shoes, sat in that church, I went through all of it, if none of that had, had have happened, I would have died by now. Really? Yep. Why is that? Well, I, I had similar problems. I, I was depressed. I continued to struggle with it. Not as bad as it used to be. But um, I, I left Singleton to come and study at the university because I, I had no direction. And um, I had a little scare one day where I nearly drove off the road. And I arrived home and decided that I was going to leave town and go and study. Wow. And obviously it, does, it wasn't a, uh, you know, it, wasn't, it didn't fix everything. I didn't just, I didn't just come to Newcastle and, um, you know, everything was fine. But um, if, I, if I hadn't seen all of that and experienced it, I, I do think that I... Uh, would be either in trouble or gone today and dealing with that the element of guilt that's involved in that is something that um, continues to take a lot of work but it is what keeps me going is that well um, there's a feeling of well you know, now I can't go anywhere. Hmm. I'm, I'm here. So you still. I'm going to stay here. Do you still struggle with that today? That feeling? No, no, not so to you, not to that extent. No. So you're strong within yourself now. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I get I get down on myself, and um, ideations creep in. I mean, you always picture it. What would happen? But um, never in danger. Never that serious. Never. Um, you know, never at the emergency stage. It's pretty unbelievable, really, that you've said that. Mm. I had no idea. But, you know, um, wow. So, for you today, you're doing a lot of really good work with Men's Health Week and situations like that, aren't you? Isn't there something that you've got going at the uni now that... No. Flowers in the ocean, or what's, tell us what that's about. Or yeah, we've got a few different wires crossed there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Uncross my wires. Um, as as far as work at the uni, like mm. I'm, I'm only in a communications role, but I I have um, I have gotten involved in uh, sort of uh, staff action groups to sort of raise just raise morale at work things like that, um, getting the opportunity to uh, speak at the, there was a, um, the launch of this student mental health and wellbeing strategy, mm -hmm. it was launched and I was invited to speak and just share the story and talk about my time as a student, um, uh, how I made it through my final semester, which was just after this all happened, and during that time I lost two friends as well with the same thing, but um. Wow, so how did you make it through your final semester? I don't know. <laughs> wow. For, oh, support. So that's yeah, important when you're going through it. that, isn't it? Yep. Just yes. to get the right support. Yeah, just family, friends, strangers, anyone who, anyone who knew um, was helpful. I got lucky. I hear of people who uh, go through what we've been through and... Uh, they 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 see 
the uh, possibly people being a little bit insensitive, whether they mean to or not. But I think I think me personally, I got very fortunate. So do you think it's brought you and your family even closer? Yep. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. Unfortunately, there had to be a great loss. But, um, I mean, you do hear that a lot because it's like you want to really support each other and the love that you have just grows so intensely. Yeah, so if there was someone out there in the audience tonight, they know the story now. They've listened to your story. Just say that they're going through a similar thing. Whether or not it's just happened to them, that maybe they've lost a brother. It might have just happened. It might have been a little while ago. Um, things might be happening in their life. Because every week I ask my guests to give a message of hope to someone out there. What would be your message that would you, you would give someone in my audience tonight that's going through a similar situation? What would be a message that you'd give them? Um, I've started, I've, I've given myself a little bit of a motto lately, or a mantra, which is just two words and that's do good. It's do good to others, do good to yourself, do good for yourself uh, for others. Don't by taking care of yourself, you, it has an indirect, it has a direct effect on your loved ones and the ones who care for you. So, yeah. No, I mean, that's... But do good. Do good. Like, I mean, and that's, it's a very simple thing. But, you know, like I say constantly, if you are going through something like this yourself or um, perhaps you're living through it now, you've had a loss or even that you're contemplating doing something to yourself. You know, the most important thing is to go and talk to someone, tell someone. There is someone that loves you. And like Josh was saying, like what changed his mind was the loss that's left behind, the situation that's left behind, and how it does make you think. So think about that. But you know, right now, if you're thinking anything like that, you know, ring Lifeline, ring any of the organisations that are out there. Tell someone what's going on in your world. Because, you know, there are beautiful people out there that care about you, that want to help you. You know, you only have to reach out. You know, and even if it's, you don't have to give your name or anything, just ring up and be anonymous and get someone to talk to you. You know, because I know things can be really, really hard and you think, that that is the only way out. It is not the only way out. Let me tell you, it's not the only way out. You know, I'm pleading with you. It's not the only way out. Talk to someone. Someone can help you. There are lots of organisations out there. Beyond Blue. You know, just just make a phone call. Were you going to say something, Josh? Yeah, and I might add, um, just as a... I should have mentioned it before when you asked about... Um, how I continue to get through uh, dark times and that is by helping others because sometimes I feel as though if, if I can't help myself the very least I can do is try to help others and then that has that has a runoff effect you know it bounces back at you seeing seeing the witnessing the good that you can do for others can remind you that you are a good person and you have value and uh, and worth because of the um, the goodness that you uh, spread around you. Mm, certainly has a ripple effect. Yeah. You know, be kind. Just be kind. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to everyone else. And watch your two words. Be good. Do good. Do good. Do good. <laughs> Do good. So you know, like, come on, Natalie. Come over here and sit in with us. Come on, let's scrunch up and we'll say good night to all our viewers. And Can you get us all in? Yeah, look at that. Okay. So I'm going to thank everyone. You can snuggle in too, it's all right. All right. I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to say thank you, Bindi Monday. We want to say thank you, Colleen Dandelion, Debbie O'Donoghue, Rowena Barry, Janet Ryan, Leanne Rugg, Dean Rosali, Lisa Hunt, 
Rob Rosewarm, thank you Rob, Trish Griffiths, Sharon Sharp, Rebecca Torrenson, Annette Ray, Liz Clark, thank you Liz, Michael Cross, Lance Baker, Chris Rourke, Kat Townsend, Shannon Emily, Carissa Blundell, and Shireen Lowe. And I'm sorry, we can't mention everyone. Like, we just can't, it's just impossible. So, you know, I just want to say thank you to all the people that I couldn't mention your names. And, you know, no matter what in life, you've got someone in your life that you can talk to. You know, just talk to someone. It's all about sharing the load. So tonight, I'm going to say, you know, no matter what in life, what do I say? You're going to be okay? Going to be okay. You're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. So thumbs up, everyone, <clears throat> just to show that you are going to be okay. Thank you, everyone, and I'll see you next week at 7.30. Bye for now.